Lama 3 on G-Rock makes GPT-4 look like a grandpa. Well, these are not my words. These are some of the words taken from a Twitter post. Apart from that, many other users have also posted on various social media platforms about the performance of G-Rock, especially Llama 3 on G-Rock. Well, Llama 3 on G-Rock is magnificently faster than GPT-4 and I have tested it myself. Another Twitter user has also written, Llama 3 8B on G-Rock is absurdly fast and good quality. Well, yes, that is true. I have myself tested it and in this video, I'm going to test it in front of you. The agenda of this video is very clear. I'm going to do a comparison of latency time between Llama 3 on G-Rock versus GPT-4. I have also created a simple Flask based application, which is basically taking a document as an input. And once you take it, indexes are created. And as a user, you should be able to ask a question and the bot will be able to respond. That has been created using Llama 3 on G-Rock and we will be doing a latency test between that and the GPT-4 model. This is not a project video, so I'm not going to do a code walkthrough in this video. But in case the Flask web application that I'm showing in this video, in case you need that application, you know what to do. You just like the video and comment and I will be sending you the code after 100 likes and 50 comments. See you in the video. If you have reached so far, it definitely means you are either interested in the topic or in the generative AI project codes. Well, let me share a bad news. The bad news is that this is unfortunately not a project video. So I'm not going to do a code walkthrough of this Flask web application. However, if you want this beautiful project code and want to add it to your folio, write down portfolio in the comment section and once i receive 50 comments i will send it out the codes to you cut to the topic so in this video we are focusing on the latency time hence i have this flask web application where the back end is llama 3 on grok or grok and in parallel we have a python notebook on gpt4 so we will be training a document on the front end so that can be used to create embeddings and the bot will be ready that can answer anything from the document. To begin with, let me show you the prompt that, ha that has been used. So the prompt is, you are a data analytics, data science, AI expert. You will be provided some documents related to these topics and you should answer. So basically, I'm asking the bot to be a data analytics master. And I will be passing some data analytics, SQL, Power BI, these kind of documents to the bot and the bot should be able to answer something from that, right? So that is my current use case, okay? And this use case can be extended to any other use case. Let's say you want to build a bot on healthcare, taking all the healthcare documents or insurance documents. So this particular application can be extended anywhere, right? That is the benefit of this use case. So coming back to the latency topic. So we have everything ready. Let's go ahead and pass a document. So in the back end, what's going to happen is the front end document is parsed, creating embeddings. And when the user query is passed, let me pass the document. And in the meanwhile, I'll explain you the flow. So right now, what has happened is I have passed a document. Now internally, embeddings are being created. Now, after the embeddings are created, the indexes will be created. Then the chat interface will be opened up. So for the time being, it's still parsing the file. So we'll wait for just few seconds. Once the file is parsed, we will have a chat interface. In that chat interface, we will ask a question. It could be anything related to the topic. So let me also show you the document that I have passed. So this is from one of my existing uh, you know classes i usually teach data analytics data science to many students and i also have data analytics and data science course sorry to pitch in here in case you're interested in data analytics or data science i'll also share my course links in the description so that you can go through it's all affordable in case you want to talk to it talk to me about this you'll also have my whatsapp link where you can talk to me cutting short to the topic so this is the document that i have passed okay so we will be asking some questions 
anything from this particular file so to get started with let me ask something related to let's say feature scaling let's say we'll ask what is feature scaling sorry what are the feature scaling methods so let's go ahead and ask what are the feature scaling methods now please note that right now the user query will go internally again the embeddings will be created it will go and call the api and it will do a matching so your large language model is already there llama index has been used to create the indexing so the document indexing is done your user input is going and then it is doing a matching that is what it is doing whatever the best match it will find from the document it will revert back so architectural wise i'll also share you the architecture as part of the codes if you are interested in the code of this project all that you want to do is just comment in the comment section and i'll send you out all the codes so let me quickly submit uh, submit this and see what will be the latency time now i'm not printing any start time or end time we'll manually kind of check it i have my stopwatch here so we'll run this see for the very first time it will take a little bit of time because it is creating indexes but whoa it's super fast i think i got the answer in two seconds so let me also ask another question and this time i'll try to ask a difficult question which is not found in a single page that means let's say i'll ask what is the difference between univariate and bivariate so it's basically fetching from two different pages what is the difference between univariate and bivariate analysis let's see well i got the answer in few seconds so univariate analysis uh, analyzing data with one variable while bivariate is analyzing two so it's it's doing a great job and i'm getting the answer exactly in 2.4 milliseconds i mean two seconds and 40 milliseconds so 2.4 seconds now we will move on to gpt4 bot so so sorry i'll not be able to show you the api keys i just flashed it i'll try to cover that up because if it is leaked then i'm gone I'll have to pay a lot of bill. So we'll get started quickly. So let me run these pieces of code. And I will run this. Okay, let it let it run. Something is wrong. Validation API keys required. Okay. So I'll have to hide this. Okay. So, anyways, now everything is done. Total execution time. Uh, sorry uh, we have run this piece of code it will take few seconds because it is going to parse the file and then you know after parsing it is invoking who are you so let it answer we are not capturing the latency time yet but in this piece of code we will be capturing the latency time we have a start time we have an end time we have a total time and we'll capture the total execution time we will be asking similar questions let's say i'll be asking this or else let's ask the first question is ad important and see so okay let's run this again for the first time it takes a little bit more time 4.7 seconds and this one 3.56 seconds oh it's still running 3.56 seconds Oh, sorry my bad my bad uh, i'm running this piece of code right so sorry another question is how to handle outliers again we'll see how much time it took like five seconds we'll ask llama 3 on grok oh my bad okay so what's happened is in the meanwhile we were away my flask application got restarted well that is something that's my mistake it's it's not grox fault so let's give some time for the application to start in and we'll also run these kind of questions into the application so let me just stop in it uh, stop it and start it again my bad so i'll start it again 
these kind of issues don't exist when you go to production like environment or you go to cloud like environment but as it is local host if there is a you know weightage time or something um, basically it is you know restarting so that can be handled it's just local host that's why it is restarting so that's not a huge problem so let it run it's processing should not take much time to process chat interface is ready we will be asking exactly these questions so first question i will be asking is eda important for data analytics and it's giving less than three seconds this one let me run this 2.3 that's really good well the timer is not visible to you but yeah um, i have a second screen where it is visible um, i should have shown that but it's okay you can you can do your test oh this gave in 1.9 that's pretty fast so uh yeah this one 1.9 5.13 kind of taking more than 2.5 times but I would say for this question, uh, 2.9, uh, 2. Point, uh, how much was that? 2.9 seconds. See, the claim on Twitter was Lama 3 on GROC is at least 4 to 5 times faster. My analysis, my testing says that it is around half the time taken by GPT-4. It's not like 4 or 5 times, but still it's a significant difference because when it comes to huge use cases where you're dealing with thousands and thousands of users and a lot of documents right so in that case that will definitely be beneficial for production level problems that's all about this particular test case in case repeating one second in case you need this document this python notebook and this beautiful project what you need is like this video share this with your friends and comment portfolio and i'll be sending out this code and in case you want a walkthrough on this video uh, on this particular project code by code line by line again write down in the comment section and i'll have a video on this next week see you in the next video Bye bye